Did FEMA really steal money out of the Disaster Recovery Fund and reroute it to migrants, leaving the agency broke? I'm sure you've been hearing those things on the internet, and obviously, you believe whoever you want. I'm not here to defend anyone. But I am here to explain the facts, how the government's budget works, and what FEMA can and cannot do. So most importantly, I want to say, all of these allegations you're hearing are politically motivated. And right now, the most important thing we can do is help the millions of Americans who have been devastated by this storm. So first and foremost, let's get our priorities straight. If you live in one of the affected disaster areas, please check with your local and state relief agencies and local charities for help. And please make sure you do apply for FEMA disaster assistance. You can do that by calling 800-621-3362 or you can go to disasterassistance.gov. If you don't have cell service or internet service, FEMA personnel are literally walking around your neighborhood signing you up in person. Remember, there are also a lot of scammers out there right now and FEMA will never ask for money or donations, so be careful who you choose to give money and supplies to. Please make sure you are donating to a reputable charity. Okay, now back to these internet allegations. Let's start with the rumor that FEMA is out of money. That's not accurate. Now, what you probably heard was Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas say earlier this week that FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. But what you probably didn't hear was the rest of his comment where he emphasized there was plenty of money to deal with the current disaster, meaning Hurricane Helene. It's exactly what FEMA told me when I interviewed the spokesperson this week. FEMA has the resources and funds to support you. I don't want anyone in the impacted states to feel that FEMA isn't going to be able to help you. We do have enough funding. We do have enough resources and we want to make sure we get it to you. Our disaster relief fund was just replenished and now we have the funds to be able to support you. You just heard the disaster relief fund was just replenished. So if you were paying attention to my recent coverage of the government shutdown, you would know that just last week, Congress passed a continuing resolution to temporarily keep the government open until December 20th. And in that continuing resolution was a special $20 billion replenishment for FEMA's disaster relief fund. That's money that can be used to help these millions of victims of Hurricane Helene. Now, since it's former President Trump who has sort of brought all this up about the immigrants, I want to make it clear that all of the no votes in the House for that CR came from Republicans. 82 of them in the House voted no. That means they were also voting no to this FEMA money. By the way, the CR overwhelmingly passed with both Republican and Democrat votes in the Senate. So now let's talk more about that $20 billion. Is it enough for FEMA to get through the season through December 20th? Especially because, as I pointed out during the interview, a portion of that $20 billion was already earmarked for another group, not migrants, a portion of the earmarked money was going to victims of the Maui wildfires and the flooding in Vermont. There was a portion of that money that was already allocated for other disasters. So is that going to be enough or is FEMA going to need more to help these people? Right now, we feel that we have enough funding to be able to respond to this event and finish our recovery projects. But you're right, again, come December 20th, we could be in that moment. I know you've also been hearing that FEMA moved money out of the recovery efforts for the disaster victims and gave that money to migrants. So let's talk about how the federal budget works. The fact is, it's Congress that allocated $640 million to FEMA's Shelter and Services Program in 2024, which gives grants to local governments and nonprofits to take care of undocumented migrants across the United States. Congress allocates that money, not FEMA. And that money, which accounts for like 2% of FEMA's overall budget, is completely separate from the Disaster Recovery Fund. Those two budgets do not cross. By the way, undocumented migrants are not eligible for FEMA cash assistance programs, according to the FEMA website. Lastly, I think it's important to clarify what FEMA can actually do for people in a disaster. It's important to know they can't do anything until a state governor has declared a disaster and the president has approved that disaster. But once that's done, what can FEMA do? Is FEMA responsible for making these victims whole? Or are they responsible for just sort of getting them back on their feet and then the rest is up to them? Yeah, so FEMA's job is to help people jumpstart their recovery. So what does that look like? That looks like helping them apply for assistance to repair their home. And there's different types of assistance that we provide people. So for example, 
you're someone who is underinsured. We now are able to provide you with assistance. Let's say your home repairs and your insurance only covered a portion of what you were what you need to cover the cost of repairing your home. You can now apply for FEMA assistance to help you with the, the difference in cost. We also have different types of assistance for personal property or computer assistance. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're someone who works from home, if you're a content creator and you ruin you had your computer ruined, you can apply for assistance from FEMA to help cover those costs. But we also have displacement assistance. Displacement assistance is if you're not able to be in your home, you're staying with friends or a hotel and you need some money to help cover those costs, we can help pay for that as well. And then we also have serious needs assistance, which is a one-time $750 payment for those serious needs like baby formula, food, medicine, anything you need in those immediate days. And so we really want to make sure that people know there are different types of assistance for everyone and that everyone's experience is unique. So depending on what you have and what you're experiencing, we can help you with that. I think that's a really important part of this because I remember there was a lot of backlash during the Hawaii wildfires when that $750 one-time payment assistance came up and everybody thought, well, that's it. FEMA's just giving these people $750 and that's it. What you're saying is, is it's a continuum. It's not just that. It's multiple different things depending on how you're actually impacted, at least through FEMA. Yes, that's exactly right. 